Tonight, John Chin is here to share some facts with, and figures with us that most people may not be aware of when it comes to our economy and the financial markets. Some of it may be illuminating, some of it may be shocking, but we should all listen to his perspectives so we can decide whether to take the red pill or the blue pill and pull our heads out of the financial matrix. Hi, good evening. Today we're going to pull our heads out of the financial and economic matrix that we find ourselves in. Welcome to the reality. Fasten your seatbelts. To start off, do you know that 37.5% of all statistics quoted on the spot are made up? <laughs> so, look at this. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about the global debt super cycle. So, a trillion is a big number. Do you guys know how big a trillion is? A trillion is a million million. If we went back a trillion seconds in time, we'd be in 30,000 BC. That's how big a trillion is. Um, currently, the global um, debt super cycle is up to 199 trillion. Um, it's increased by 40%. China, I know everybody thinks China is saving a lot of money, but they've quadrupled their debt since 2007. Because of all of this debt, we're gonna try and keep it on the kind of lighter note. Because of all of this debt, <laughs> the velocity of money has slowed down to a five and a half decade low. The velocity in essence is how quickly money cycles through the system. And you can see it just hit a low and it's, it doesn't refer to what happens to the speed of a penny as you fling it off the Empire State Building. Uh, what do we do with all that debt? Well, we bought homes we couldn't afford. We bought McMansion. If somebody had shown you that chart, you would have said, I'm going to sell my house. As you could see, that was, um, and we're still kind of just bouncing along the bottom at half a million new homes per, per year. Uh, the consumer price index, I don't know what I want to talk about this, but uh, it's, um, well, I'll just wait for it the next slide. So. I don't know who put these slides together, by the way. So. Okay, um, so with all of this debt, our economic cycles are much more volatile. So you could see 2008, um, we had that huge spike up in inventory. Uh, and for the first quarter, because of a negative GDP, we actually had inventory spike as well. And you could see before that, things were much more muted. So the economic cycle potentially could be more, more volatile. Sorry for all of these numbers. It's, it's, it's all <laughs> um, so, so over the last couple of decades, we've seen women enter the workforce. We've seen global um, labor supplies where people need two incomes. So it peaked in 2000 with 67, 68% of the population working. It's since declined to 62.9%. A lot of those who are still in the workforce are actually over 55 and up. And you could see 55 um, through 75, it's increased significantly by the magnitude of 30 to 55%. So the number of people 75 and older um, have increased by almost 53, 54%. Uh, the rich are getting richer. Uh, since 1967, the top 5% has increased their income by 88%, whereas the middle 20% has have only increased by 21.2. There's too much on this chart, but um, <laughs> Americans love their cars. So over the last, since 1970, Americans have been driving more and more. What you do see is over the last decade and a half, um, we've peaked in terms of number of miles that have been driven. And also with baby boomers aging, they're just driving less or they can't drive. And vehicle sales per capita is down 29.8% since 1978. I guess that's why not to be mean to any General Motors, I guess that's why General Motors needed to be bailed out, but um, a, a lot of that debt has also gone into the financial markets. So you can see margin debt, all that red is going into the stock market. The stock market's at an all time high. That's why also uh, the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates at 0%. I mean, that's pedal to the metal. It doesn't get more aggressive than, than that. There's a lot going on there. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of charts, they all kind of say the same thing, but the bottom line is 
right now, if you're talking about the financial markets, we're in essence comparing it to 1929 or the dot-com bubble. And I know some of you were not around during 1929, and some of you may be too young to remember the dot-com bubble, but they were awful times. I mean, we had bread lines, and we had people you know, who thought they were millionaires because they had, um, I don't know what, Cisco or Nortel or whatever it is. And they've seen their literally kind of everything disappear. I mean, when you look at this, we're currently, if you look in the 94.2 percentile. So if you're at this point thinking, hey, should I get into the stock market? You've already missed it. Okay, don't chase this thing. That's Warren Buffett. Uh, he has this Buffett indicator. Not, not the chart, but, but he, he came up with the indicator. And uh, this is the second highest reading ever. It measures corporate equities to GDP. It's not high-level high, high level math, but, you know, he's basically danger, danger. You know, don't do it. By the way, if, if, um, if you're not scared by what you're seeing, you're not paying attention. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'll just point this number out. So this is uh, something called an unbalanced volume. It, in essence, tracks cumulative buying and selling of the stock market. You could see that it's been going down. So who, even though the market is still high, somebody is selling into the market. And you know, generally, if you think about trying to unload your financial assets, you want to unload and make as little noise as possible. Um, have you guys seen any gold commercials? You know, sell your gold. Don't do it. Gold is going to run out in 20 years. Goldman Sachs, tw uh, two months ago, published a report saying that there's going to be no more gold to be dug up. If you're going to have to find some, we're going to have to mine some asteroid. And finally, um, I guess lucky seven, uh, between the 2000 peak and the, the dot-com bubble and the 2007 housing crisis, it was seven years, seven months. Today, we're seven years, seven months from the 2007 peak. So it's a little spooky, but, uh, um, but it's all going to be okay. Thank you. I, I'm wondering, uh, what are some uh, financial uh, last, uh, you know, ending thoughts for us to like, just, just, just give us a brief overview of like what we should think about, like when we just say. The best offense is a good defense. <laughs> and, <laughs> and don't be complacent and don't put your head in the sand. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, John.